Welcome back to Digital Wandering. And I wanted to talk again about the Ubuntu Touch operating system. And I have here my Nexus 5 uh, 2013 uh, device. It was released running the latest version of Ubuntu Touch. Now, I think I have about six reasons why you may want to consider Ubuntu Touch. But my videos are unscripted, so I'm thinking it's six, but it might be seven, it might be eight. Who knows? We'll see when we get there. But I want to start off with the first uh, reason why I think Ubuntu Touch may be a really good operating system to use, and that's the potential length of support. I believe that uh, some of the core devices, such as this one, and maybe devices like the OnePlus One and some others, I don't think it's out of the realm of, realm of expectation that you may receive as long as two, 10 years, or maybe even more as far as the length of support. Many of these devices are already uh, many years in, uh, five or more years in of, of them being able to operate in Ubuntu Touch. And I think that's going to continue for these core devices going forward. Uh, compare that to Android and iOS. Now, iOS has a really great record as far as supporting their devices. Uh, that's... Um, I think you can really expect to get five or more years of support under iOS. Um, Android uh, historically have been much less. Uh, some of the Android manufacturers recently have stated that they will support devices as long as four years. And I'm hearing a rumor that the upcoming Pixel may be supported by uh, as long as five years, but we'll have to see. In the past, some Android manufacturers have made promises on updates they didn't keep. So we'll have to look and see what happens. Uh, but even if um, Android increases it to five years, and in some cases, iOS has supported devices as long as eight years, uh, there is a definite greater cost stepping into um, those platforms, especially uh, those uh, support, especially on, and when you're talking about Android, is going to be for flagship devices. Uh, budget devices are going to get a lot less support. For these, um, you can get a, a device that's used uh, that can save you money uh, if you get one of these core devices and the potential of having many years of support. And that's something that you can't really replicate uh, anywhere else in the uh, smartphone space. Uh, number two reason why I think Ubuntu Touch is a decent operating system to use is that you don't have to create an account like uh, the UB, UB Ports Foundation that supports uh, the development of this operating system. I don't have to have an account with them in order to utilize Ubuntu Touch to its um, greatest capabilities. Now, technically, you do not have to have like uh, an Apple ID or a Google account to use an Apple ID for an iPhone or a Google account for an Android phone to set up the phone. Um, it does ask you for your login information, but you can skip past that. But to utilize that device to its greatest capabilities, which means being able to download apps and accessing the App Store for updates, you need to have an ID to do that. Uh, so here, I can access the App Store, the Open Store, download apps without actually having any account. Um, also, I can also have future updates on this device. No account needed whatsoever. Uh, that's big for me because I do have a degree of account fatigue here. Uh, just have we have so many accounts that we have to maintain uh, to operate online and to utilize these devices. I really like to I really like the ability to be able to utilize a smartphone without having to manage another account. Uh, so that's a major plus for me. And that also kind of goes into the number three uh, reason why I think this is really good and is privacy focused. Uh, so they're not using my information 
in order to monetize it in some way with this uh, Ubuntu touch phone. Uh, they're not sending me ads. Uh, so my privacy, I feel like it's a little bit more respected or very much more respected under this operating system than it is under iOS or uh, Android. I mean, there's just a certain commercial need for them to utilize all the information from their millions and sometimes billions of users in some way, especially with Android, because Android and Google is essentially an advertising company. Uh, they're going to utilize that information in order to send ads to their users. Uh, that's something I don't have to worry about here. iOS, um, I think... It, it, because they're not, you know, they're not really making a, I don't think they really make a lot of money from advertising. They're not mining their users' data as much, but they're still use, utilizing their user data in order to shape their experience. Um, they're monetizing it probably in some way, maybe not as uh, aggressively as Google, but they're still utilizing that data in ways that uh, the users may not fully know. Here, have a much greater uh, protection of my user data. So uh, that's something that's really good. Um, I think we're up to number four now, supporting old hardware. This is a phone from 2013. You're not going to have a phone that old that is still running the latest version of any smartphone OS. You're just not. Uh, the closest you're going to get is iOS, and this is one of the reasons why iOS is one of my favorites. Uh, with uh, like a phone like uh, the iPhone 5S, which came out, I believe, in the same year, 2013, the 5S, that uh, was supported as that's still technically still supported until to, till today at least with security patches. Um, you could put uh, the iOS uh, or iPhone 5S onto iPhone uh, iOS 12. iOS 12 operating system came out in 2018 and that's still supported with security patches. So in, in a sense, you can get about eight years of support under, uh, under Apple with the iPhone 5S and the other devices that came out during that time frame. I think... Uh, also, uh, that's going to be the uh, iPad Mini 2 also came out in, I think, in 2013. And there's a lot of long list of devices that I can't always, I can't think of off the top of my head right now. Uh, now, that is close to this, but still not as good in a sense because that's not the latest version of iOS, I, uh, iOS 12. That came out in 2018, although it's still receiving security patches as recently as June 2021. It's not the same as this, where this is still, this is on the latest version of Ubuntu Touch. Uh, so close, but not the same. Um, so the support of old hardware, being able to get a device like this and putting it on the latest version of an operating system, really strong plus for Ubuntu Touch. And Android, you know, it's just not there yet. Um, this phone under Android was supported for three years, so uh, it, it lost its support on the OS level in 2016, five years ago. Uh, so, and that's the last time this, uh, on the, uh, the OS for this device under Android received any type of updates or security patches. You can still receive updates for your apps through the App Store, but not the underlying OS that it runs on. Uh, so that's a major plus with this device, it's the support for old hardware. Now, another thing is, what are we up to now? I think uh, number five. The organization, UB Ports, uh, that maintains this operating system, it's much smaller uh, than a Google or Apple, obviously. Now, there's some negatives to that, having um, a small organization, but one thing that's positive from the, user, uh, from the user's perspective is that 
you can have a much greater from not only from the user perspective, from this perspective of the individual developer, you have a much greater impact on being involved in the community surrounding this operating system. On Android uh, or iOS, uh, supported by multi-billion dollar companies and receiving billions of dollars in research and development, you do not have the impact that you have with this. Uh, this still requires or seeks out the involvement of, of, of volunteers. Even a video like this, uh, a video about the reasons for using Ubuntu Touch is going to be more impactful and reach more, video, uh, more people uh, than a video on the same subject matter for Android or iOS. It'll be a drop in a bucket. It doesn't have much of an impact. Uh, but Ubuntu Touch is a much smaller community and any involvement that you have with that community has a greater impact. Making an app for this community, is a, you have a much greater impact. Now, Android and iOS, you have a greater ability to reach more people, uh, but more Millions of people, even out of the billions of users, is kind of a small percentage. Uh, if you were able to create an app that reached that many people, it's hard to reach that many people because you're competing with so many other developers and other apps that are already existing into that ecosystem. There's under probably under a thousand apps available, or well under a thousand apps available for this platform. Uh, so something as simple as a gallery app that you create for this uh, will have a much greater impact than a gallery app that you would create for Android or iOS. It would be just much greater importance to the community. Uh, so you wouldn't have the ability to reach as many people in raw numbers, but the percentage of people and users that you reach would be much greater with this. Uh, doing a blog post, being involved in a forum, and, and, and giving out information, tips and tricks that you find out for this uh, platform. Much greater impact in regards to the community because it's so much smaller. Uh, so I think that's a major, major win. Uh, the apps, number of apps are small enough that you can really search through all of them and find out all the ones that are useful to you. It's... With the iOS and um, and Android app stores, it is so tough uh, because there's just so many apps and it's so curated now. Uh, it's really hard to know what apps are available. Um, I often really depend on um, videos like YouTube videos or articles in tech magazines where they give information on new important apps that are available. Um, outside the apps that I've been using for years, app discovery is much harder on those platforms, it seems to me, because it's just so much, so much there. App discovery here is much easier. I'm much more aware of new apps that are released uh, just because it's just so much smaller. Uh, so that is a challenge that is so much smaller. You, you have less choice but you're more you're more conscious of all the choices that are available. Um, so yeah, I think uh, the small size is something that is a good reason to use it if you're attracted to that as a reason, which I am. Uh, okay, so that uh, was number five, I think. Okay, number six. So we're up to number six. Want to continue talking about apps. The apps that you have available on this platform are free. Now, some apps, if you download them, uh, the developer requests that if you wish, you can send them uh, a donation. But to download and utilize these apps, uh, it doesn't cost you anything to do so. So these are free apps, which isn't the case so much with iOS and Android nowadays. Um, iOS and Android, there are free apps available, uh, but it's so common now, especially in certain app categories that I go into where every app that I see, even if it's free to download, it has that information about M app purchases. 
And some apps are really uh, restricted as far as utilizing for free. In order to get the most out of the app, you're going to have to spend money. It seems like the the, the free apps that are most fr- the the freest <laughs> are the big gigantic apps like uh, like Instagram, maybe TikTok, the social media apps uh, that support themselves with advertising. The ads are often not that intrusive, so you can kind of ignore them, but they're there. And they, there's no bait and switch. There's no download the app and then you open up the app and you found out, okay, it's only a free trial. And if you really want to use the app long term, you're going to have to spend money. Uh, that is just so much common now. Um, and again, it's only those gigantic apps that seem to be free entirely. Uh, other apps are almost all in-app purchases now. Uh, where in the past, when I first was using smartphones, there was a lot of free apps, there was, and they were 100% free. Sometimes having ads, uh, but they weren't intrusive. Sometimes you would have an app where you have a free app you download, and then there would be a paid app you download. The free app would have services, uh, but if you wanted, they had some specialized services that uh, you had to pay for, and you would, if you wanted to do so, you would um, download the pay app. The paid for app. Um, now the difference is that um, a lot of times when you paid for an app, it was a one-time purchase. Today, a lot of paid apps are under a subscription model now. That's becoming more and more common. So uh, you're paying every month now to utilize this service, which isn't wasn't the case in the past. Um, so it's a definite change in how apps operated in the past compared to now. Uh, one thing that's um, really important about that is I, I, some people may want to blame the developers, but I think it's in a large, a large many cases, it's really um, Apple and Google leaning on developers. I think uh, a lot of times in order to get your app approved for their app store, they want to see a paid for option. Uh, because it's an important revenue generator for them uh, to have a paid-for option because they get their cut from that. Here in Ubuntu Touch, you don't have to worry about that. I mean, the apps are free, um, and sometimes if you choose to, especially if you get a a great use out of an app, uh, you can donate to the developer. Uh, But... It's just a totally different app environment uh, to what you see on iOS or Android. Okay, wow. I think that's uh, my six uh, reasons. I don't think I have any more. If I if I have some more, so we did stay at six. If I have some more, I might do a part two. But I think that's really good for right now. If you have any other reasons that you can think of why someone should use Ubuntu Touch, Put it in the comments. Uh, Thank you for watching. This is Digital Wanderings signing off.